absolutely different than fighting one man. So your entire role changes. Um, you still want to think outside the box. You still want to take all those shots I just showed you into consideration. Um, and over time, you'll learn to modify them for what still works for you. When I'm on the melee field, I am not a killer. That is not my, we're all killers, right? When it comes down to it, try to kill the guy that's running me down. That's the basic instinct of every fighter with every weapon. I am a support archetype, right? Um, Will, if you, uh, do you have your nine footer over here? You wanna bring that over here for me and face Godfrey. So if they're spear dueling, we're gonna pretend Godfrey has a nine footer. They're both within range of each other and a mama bird with a sword will be here. I am impeding half of his eight step process by being here. I'm saving him from Godfrey and Stavros, but I'm impeding him with a glaive. I am not impeding a single step. And all I gotta do is keep wiggling and keep deflecting and keep slapping shit out of his face. And that gives him the time to kill them. And I'm not impeding him. He can move, he can throw his arms back, he can jump back if he needs to. That also puts me out of their range. I am completely safe from everything but crossbows right here. There's zero threat. So I'm calm. I'm collected. I'm not in a panic. I'm keeping him alive, making sure he's cool, kind of paying attention to his opponents. But really, I could just stand here and kind of do this and keep him alive. And I'm looking at your back ranks. Who is calling command? Is there a cluster of shield guys gathering somewhere? Is somebody counting? One, two! Look for that shit, because that is what makes or breaks a play. If I can spot the six-man column charge, I can be like, Will, you're on your own. And I just dip down behind my line, because I wasn't really important. He can survive on his own. But now he's playing defensively. Before, he could just attack, and I protect him. Now he switches modes important to train with the same people all the time. You know, get to know your team. But that allows me to just disappear. These guys didn't even register me as a threat. I'm not swinging at anybody. I'm not yelling command. I'm not doing anything to gather and protect. Half the time, these dudes don't know what I'm doing. Dude, Tankard one time, he came in to kill Alric with a great sword, and I literally put my glaive, like get into a stance. I put my glaive right here, and Tankard hit it five times. And I didn't move it. He kept chopping it, not realizing why he wasn't dying. Because they don't get it. They're like, oh, well, he's not. He's just standing there. They don't perceive the threat. So when I disappeared, nobody notices. That allows me to set up to shut down charges, which is on the top three things you should do as a mass weapons guy. Um, like I was talking to Axgar, when I fight seven and a half foot, a lot of the time, you will see my hand this right this changes uh somebody want to grab a sword and shield and step over here real quick so janine is in front of me addressing godfrey right address godfrey no <laughs> so take your guard with my hand up this is as deep as I can go with the supination, with the bending of my wrist. And some people have even less than me. So when you get in close, I'm barely able to hit Godfrey, right? With my hand here, I can literally just club Godfrey in the face. And when I'm out of position here, I lose all power on my shot. But with my hand here, it becomes a punch forward. Um, so one thing I, I like to do is when there's all shield contact and there's one line of shields with like five guys, pushing another five guys is I'll take a running start and I will run up and jump and I hit three guys over the heads of my shieldmen Do -do 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 -do! because I have 300 pounds hurling through the air when I hit the first guy the power doesn't stop so I literally go dunk, 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 with the same shot and kill three guys because I'm lining my arm up right there's a there's a technique in Kung Fu, where they talk about the alignment of the arm is called pointing, right? So if I align my arm right, you cannot bend my arm. If I rest my arm here on, on your shoulder, you could put all your weight into trying to bend this joint and it won't bend, right? And that's how you stiff arm. 
without using all your muscles. So that's the same thing I'm doing. I'm just rotating my arm, aligning my arm, and this becomes rock solid. And you can just use all your body mechanics and your torso muscles to push that power through. Um, another thing is you can thrust from down low a little better than this, and you can pull cue with a glaive better than you can pull cue with a nine footer. You see a guy like this, that means they let go when they thrust. Okay. Um, another thing to keep in mind: if I'm a utility care, I'm a utility guy, and this guy is harassing us. One thing I will observe is right hand is forward, right? That means this is the outside of his gauntlet, which means when I slap his spear, I don't want to slap it into his hand. I want to slap it out of his hand, and his gauntlet will spring open and carry his weapon away. So if I do that, boom, he'll kill him. He'll kill him. He's wide open. That's all I have to do. Slap his shit out of the way and focus on not letting these dudes kill you while you kill him. I'm, com I'm, co I'm completely on a team mentality. I never get hungry. I never get thirsty. It's not about my kill count. It's about whether or not we win. So you do what you can to back up your people. If I see a column charge coming straight at us and I don't think I can shut it down by, by shooting at them, say there's two or three guys in front of me, I will turn my glaive sideways and brace them. Anybody can do it. I'm supporting five guys like that. And you're way back here, way out of range. You're totally safe. You can get totally in a position. And anybody of any stature, whether it's you or him or Gilbert or whoever, can support a huge amount and dress your line so that their, their charge bumps off. Um, if a charge or a flank gets through, that is also your job. As a great sword guy or a glaive guy, if you see, and you should be aware of it, if you don't see it happen, discipline yourself because you should have seen it. Um, everything I'm teaching you is to design a environment, a personal environment for yourself to where you're able to observe things. You should know more than the spear guy or the shield guy. You should, period. You see more, you're able to, you're, you're out of range, you're safer than them. So if you see one pop through that you couldn't get to or you couldn't stop or say you sent a great sword guy or another glaive guy over there and they got punked, it happens. I, I get punked a lot. If you see them in the backfield, none of this matters. None of this matters. Your shield guys and your spear guys got it. They can't move. They're doing important, crucial jobs. You are the utility guy. You are expendable. You turn around and you run those fuckers down. Um, so you have to get good at the same stuff we just talked about is like the mental game, the intimidation game, uh, the, the fake game. They expect you to be brutal, heavy, slow, hard hitting, right? So you want to be fast, agile, quick, accurate. That's what that's what fucks them up. They don't expect that out of a glaive. So even with a seven and a half footer, this isn't very heavy, right? This is this is substantially lighter than that six footer that this guy has. That, you know what I mean? But that'll rip you in half. That's scary for a different reason. Um, but I'm strong as hell. I can hurt you with this, even though it's whippy. So I don't need all that stuff. And if you're, if you're good enough with your leverage and your body mechanics and your hip chambering and stuff like that, you don't need to be super strong either. Um, so remember your tourney dynamics when you're fighting guys. Because a lot of the time, I'll run up and it'll be me against three guys in the backfield. So a key thing to being an, a glaive fighter, which is what wins me the Dan Banneret all the time, is me and each person in my crew can simultaneously engage three people. I can by myself tie you up, tie him up, and tie him up. You're probably going to kill me. It's probably going to be him that kills me. I know that going in. But I can still engage you, and I can keep you busy. So in the worst case scenario, I'm going to die, but I tied you up enough long enough to get Stavros behind you or get Des running up your, your flank. That's ideal, because I don't care if I live. I'm not going to be the guy that turns the tide of the battle. I'm there to keep it consistently in our favor. Right, we're a long-term objective type of person. That's the deal. That's what you have to be. Um, a long time ago, like Goonball told me when I joined, he's like, "You're the heavy machine gunner. You fire shots and kill everything in front of you." That is not what this is about anymore. That's a nine-foot spear now. We've evolved. They're the sniper rifles and the machine gunners. You got two different kinds of nine-foot guys out there. Right, one of the most effective units in our kingdom is Octo Bellatorum. The current king is a part of it. The previous king was a part of it. The king before that was a part of it. Okay, they're, they're like the cream of the crop up north. And one of the greatest things that I've seen them do as a team is they'll walk up with three spears, right? This one's Gabe. 
This one's Bobby, and this one's Alistair. Alistair hits super hard, right? And he's like a really slow sewing machine. Boom, 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 boom. And he takes little steps, and Gabe's a hard-hitting, fast sewing machine. Bam, 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 bam. And Bobby doesn't do shit. And he's smaller than them, he's not as flashy as them, and he steps forward one inch at a time with them, and he just waits. Bam! Now Godfrey's dead, and your line looks a lot less intimidating now. And it took Bobby one shot, because you're worried about Gabe and Alistair. That's a great diversionary tactic. I exist to shut that shit down. Because I can come in out of their range, scoop little Gabe's spear, and try to hit Alistair in the face with it, and that crosses all of them up and gives my guys opportunities. I have to be the guy that says, okay, that's what killing that's what's killing us. Okay, some guy needs to shut Pierre up. It's his calls and his decisions leading that shield wall that is making them unbreakable. It is Stavros running that wide flank. It is Walt is us sending five guys to kill Walric like an idiot. I'll just go fight Walric for five minutes if you guys can kill these guys. I'll do it myself. I won't win, but neither will he. And I can do that because I have the power of the range. I know how to backpedal. I know how to change direction. We just covered all that. So I can defend myself from Walric all day. He can't kill me because I'm fighting him from here and he has a fucking...